Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to validate environment variables. So we are going to use this env.t3.jj, right? This is basically framework agnostic validation for a type safe environment variables. Never build your apps with invalid environment variable again. Validate and transform your environment with the full power of Zot. So basically we are going to validate our environment variable with Zot. So, yep, let's take a look how we can use it. Let's go to documentation here. And because we are going to use Next.js, of course, I'm going to click this Next.js right here. And we are going to follow along this documentation. All right. So let's first generate Next.js application. I already done that right here, right? So let's cd to that uh, Next ENV. And then I'm going to open that in VS Code. So the first thing what we are going to do is let's install the package. The package is going to be this one, t3-oss-environment-next.js and also we are going to install this Zot, right? So let's copy all of that and then open a terminal. Just paste that right here and hit enter. All right, we're done. So let's go back to documentation. As you can see, this package right here is required minimum of TypeScript version of 5. Let's take a look at our package.json file and I believe we're using TypeScript um, 5 right here, right? Great. So now we can create our schema. But before that, we are going to create our environment variable, right? So let's create that dot env like this. For this example, basically we have three environment variable, right? So the first up here, this is basically server side variables, and we have database URL. This is PostgreSQL and etc. This is an API secret key and etc. Right, and also we have the client side variable. This is will expose to the browser We're using next public API URL, and this is the uh, value. Right. So basically, if you want to create an environment variable that exposed into the client, right, into the browser, you have to put this next public in the front of the name in uh, the environment variable right as you can see on the top right here we don't have the next public right because this is should be just accessible on the server not on the client okay so that's our environment variable great all right for example on the home right here this is a basically server component right so we run this console log server set database url which is we just console log the environment variable database url and for other console log we console log the server side api secret key and we just get the api secret key value from the environment variable great so now if i do npm run dev now we should see the value on the console right because this is run on the server so let's try to reload i think all right so after i reload and now as you can see on the terminal we have server side database url we get the value and also server side API key, we also get the value, right? But now if I just, for example, I forget to put this value, I just remove that. And now as you can see, we still get the value in here. We not get any error validation in here. So that's why we need to use this package that we already installed, which is this one right here in to validate our environment variable that's going to be, um, require or the string should be have maybe 20 line character and etc we are going to learn that so now as you can see we need to create the env.ts file inside the source so let's go to source because we not using source right just putting that outside in here so we can do that in this env.ts file basically we need to export the const env right here right just uh, copy that and then i'm going to paste that right here and then inside that, we need to run an object right here, right? Just import the create env from the uh, package. And inside in here, we need to specify what is going to be the server environment and what is going to be the client environment. So this is the example, okay? So I just want to copy that and paste that right here. Okay, great. But as you can see, we get that error because we have to put the runtime environment. But if you are on the using Next.js of uh, lower than 13 you need to specify the runtime environment manually which is you need to copy all everything in here right but i believe i using the latest version which is a 15 i believe uh, let's see right here right 15 so we need to just use this right here okay so basically 
you only need to destructor client variable so we don't need to put the server variable in here so let's just copy this one right here and go back into the envts and just paste that right here of course we need to uncomment that here we go now the error is gone and of course we need to import the z right here come from the zot i believe so let's import it on the top right here like that cool so now we need to just change the server right here so let's go back the first thing is database url so let's make sure this is database url and of course because this is url of course this is going to be a string and also url okay and also another thing is this api secret key i'm gonna copy that and paste that right here and the api secret key should be a string and it should be have minimal value to one and also for the client environment variable which is this one next public api url i'm gonna copy that and paste that right here right and for the validation of course this is string and of course it should be have minimal value one as you can see we get an error because now we should use next public api url and also next public api url in here okay it's done right now let's try to access that environment variable on the page.tsx right here right we don't need to use this process env now so we can use this env variable come from this file so let's just remove the process and just import the env come from the add slash env right here so as you can see we get the value on the terminal right great so if i for example remove this database url as you can see what happened is we get an error on the terminal that say uh, scroll up and as you can see invalid url because we set that into string and then url here okay we also add another um validation here of course for example i'm going to remove this one and just paste this right here as you can see basically we said the database url it should be a string it should be url and we run this function right here refine function that take the string which is the value for from this environment variable right the value right here we get that value in here and also we make sure that the string it should be start with postgresql and colon slash less if not start from with this a uh, value it's going to be show this message database url must be a postgresql connection string okay so for example now of course uh, everything should be clean right as you can see it's clean now let's try to for example change this url here into ww or whatever right okay? i'm going to say if you can see we get an error if i scroll up as you can see uh, we get a database url must be a postgresql connection string that's the beauty about a validation as you can see we get an error because we set the error message in here okay great so let's try to put another um, validation on this api secret key so i'm going to remove this right here and just paste this uh, validation as you can see this should be in a string and this is, should be minimal one character if there's no character in that api secret key i just return this message api secret key cannot be empty and as you can see right here the string length it should be more than 32 character right if not 32 character it should be returned this api secret key must be at least 32 character long okay so now let's try to refresh again and everything should be fine uh, let's go back here uh, it should be fine great so now let's try to uh, i think remove this text here it's not 32 right so let's take a look on the terminal we get this api secret key must be at least 32 character long if i make it back and now everything should be clean nice super super great and also as you can see on the environment task right here we have this client right we also can access the client environment variable into the uh server component so for example i'm gonna put this client right here next public api url with this environment dot next public api url now we still get that value okay great but just make sure for the sensitive information like let me go back here for a database url a secret key open api key or something like that you have to putting that on the server don't putting that on the public right here 
because everything that you set next public it should be exposed into the browser so anyone can see that key right just make sure everything it should be on the server if you want to make sure that's secure right so next i'm going to just copy and paste my client component right here right and as you can see i use use client on the top right here and just make sure i import the environment come from the env okay and then i'm going to import this client component into the page right here so we can see that on the browser so let's do client component like this okay and now we should see that on the browser as you can see check the console for env values so let's check in spec and as you can see on the client component basically we just console log this client site next public api url and just this next public api url okay so let's go to the console and now we should see this uh, client site next public api url with this value https slash slash api dot example dot com okay i hope you can see that but if you not see it i'm going to move my face right here right this is the value so if you want to access the server variable server environment into the client as you can see right here, I just comment that this is what goes in runtime error because we want to access the server a variable server environment into the client component, right? So of course we cannot do that because this is come from the server. So let's try to save and as you can see on the browser, we have this error, a server side environment variable on the client. Okay, that's great. And of course, you can always add another uh, validation on this environment.ts right here. So for example, for this next public API URL, I'm going to add another validation here. Like uh, as you can see right here, this should be a string and this should be half a URL type string, right? And also if not the URL, I'm going to return this message right here, message error. And also the minimal value should be one. If not one, just return this empty error. So let's try to remove that uh, next public URL here to make sure we get an error on the console. Remove that. And now as you can see, I'm gonna scroll up. And then as you can see, we have next public API URL must be a valid URL. Next public API URL cannot be empty. That means this is basically will return this message. Alright, so hopefully this video helpful. If you have another idea for the next video, just leave a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys on the next one.